Okay, so here we have one such situation where we have a piece of lens. It's got a spherical section on the one side and a different spherical section on the other. Uh, coming out, we have the image points. Sorry, the object emits light rays coming out. It gets bent through the first interface and gets bent again through the second interface into our image point back here. To analyze this, we just have to break it down into the individual um, the two individual surfaces and apply our formulas in a successive manner. So basically we draw, there's two different sphere here. We have the first sphere, excuse me, for the first interface and a different sphere for the second interface. Naming a bunch of things. The first sphere is centered here, second sphere is centered here. We extrapolate these lines inside the medium backwards to find out where the first image point is which then serves as the object for our next interface. Um, naming a few more things, the lens itself is as thick as the distance d. We've still got image distance 1 giving us, sorry, the object distance 1 giving us the object, sorry, the image distance 2, which serves as the object of the second interface here giving us the second image distance. So breaking this down, we have one lens, first of all, that's got a big sphere on it, and we enter into glass, basically. We've got NL, NMs on the outside, and we have our object and image distance with that going on. In our case, the radius is positive, the object distance is also positive, and the image distance being back here, to the left of the lens is going to be negative and n1 of our, the medium we're entering from is going to be the medium which is often air and then we have the lens for n2 on the other side we have we're exiting the glass also in a spherical section uh, in this case the sphere it's now curved the other way. We're not so much looking at what's the glass, what's the medium, it's where the light ray originates from and goes to. So we're going towards an interface where the um, circle, or I guess the center of the circle is to the left, so radius is less than zero. Object distance is greater than zero. Image distance is where it's up to the right, so it's also greater than zero. And in, our, and in this case, the N1 is going to be the lens because that's where we're coming from and N2 is the medium because that's where we're going to. So putting it all back, we can start to analyze the system with the formula that we just had. Let's sub in everything for the first interface. For the first interface, we have NM SO1 plus NL S image 1 is equal to NL minus N oops NM over R1 call this equation 1 then we also have the second interface following a very similar manner once again the row of N2 and N1, sorry, N lens and N medium swaps around. Looking back at the diagram itself, we can see that SO2 is equal to SI1 plus D. And because SI1 is negative, to make that positive, we have to introduce a negative, oops, negative S, oops, not double negative, just a one negative, plus D. So we can sub this in back here. This gives us NL over negative SI1 plus D plus NM over S2 equal to n 
Well, I'm gonna swap them around. And this is equation number three. If we take equation one plus equation three, we end up with Nm is equal to S1 plus Nl over Si1, oops, Si1 plus Nl over negative Si1 plus D plus Nm Si2 equals to Nl over Nm R1 minus Nl and and m over r2. Then we have another lovely approximation. It's called the thin lens approximation, where d is very close to zero, or strictly speaking, d is much much less than the both the object distance and the image distance, as well as the radius. If that is the case, then we snub that away, and those two terms go bye-bye. What we end up with becomes quite a bit simpler now. We have Nm is equal over SO1 plus Nm over SI2 is equal to Nl minus Nm, 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Keeping in mind that in our case R2 is negative. Uh, dividing the Nm over, we have 1 over SO1 plus 1 over SI2 and L Nm over Nm 1 over 1 minus 1 over R2. And because remembering we have our D is basically 0, we can call SO1 to be just the SO. And then SI2 is just the SI, so we can destroy these subscripts. And we end up with this lovely overall result, which we call the lens maker's formula. It's useful in the sense that given the radii of our two spherical sections we can and the type of material we're working with we can then work out what is the um, image distance for any given object distance let's make this formula furthermore we can characterize the lens then using what's known as the focal length because you see on everything on the right hand side here doesn't really depend on SO or SI, all of this is just dependent on characteristic of the lens. So we can use this to find a constant to encapsulate all these um, different variables and just use this thing called the focal length. So the focal length is the distance to the focal point. And how the focal point is defined is what happens if you send a bunch of parallel rays through a lens, where do they come together to form that image? So if you start parallel, you're going to come to this point called the focal point, and this length is the focal length. So this is the focal point. Similarly, you can also have an object start at a particular distance to form these infinite light sorry to form these parallel light beams coming out that's also the focal point and it is for thin lenses it's perfectly symmetric so in this case we use our the one side of a lens maker's formula we see that plus one over si dividing the nm over because we don't really care about that anymore well because it's still constant it's going to be 1 over infinity because the object distance to get parallel rays is infinity. So 1 over infinity gives you 0 plus 1 over f. Similarly, we can look at this case. 
equals 1 over f plus 0. So for both cases, it's the same thing. Um, and because that's constant, for given lens, we can characterize the lens by its focal length. 1 over SO plus 1 over SI is equal to 1 over F. And this is another good famous, it's the Gaussian lens formula. It allows us for, given the focal length of the lens, we can work out for any particular object distance where the image is going to form, or given basically two of those three things and figure out the third one. Once again, there is a certain sign convention that we have to be careful about. Basically for lenses, the thinking is you expect to have an object going through a lens, then going through than forming an image on the other side. So this is the case where everything is positive. So therefore, if I have a lens like this, SO will be greater than zero on this side, and SO will be negative on that side because we expect the object to come before the lens. We're always going that way <laughs> by convention. Uh, the image also plays the role of the focus. So on this side, if the image ends up on this side, it's less than zero. If the image ends up on the right side, it's greater than zero because we expect the image to be after the lens. Same thing for the focus. We think of the focus as the image of infinite beam, so it pretty much follows the same convention. A couple other words. For for you in terms of describing these lenses. Uh, each interface can be, surely you've heard these words before, concave, where the, basically the arc caves in, and then you have convex, where you have the arc pops out. Now you can have um, any combinations, of course, you can have, you know, concave, convex lens, or you have concave concave lens, or you can even have a convex planar lens. Um, so concave convex just kind of describe the looks, but what's more important is we have words like these. We have also a converging lens, that's more functional description if you have a converging lens. The light rays comes together, and you have f is greater than zero, and then you can also have a diverging lens, which then the light ray goes away, and then your focus is actually extrapolated backwards back here, so you have a negative focus. Uh, we usually draw these as draw the converging as con convex convex, and the diverging as concave concave, but that is definitely not. Um, absolutely necessary. You can have diverging lenses that are concave different amounts on each side and typically that's what our eyeglasses look like. You don't see eyeglasses that caves in on both sides. They're just curved outwards by different amount on the two on the two sides. So next let's put this all together to see how we can predict where images are formed and what kind of images are formed using our ray diagrams.